Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record every Mondays at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time. If you enjoy the channel, please hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on and you will get an email link with this full episode. And if you want to submit to this show, take a look at the information in the description. So we're playing uh, eight-handed, two-five. Uh, 1,200 effective. Um, I open uh, nine of hearts, nine of diamonds under the gun to 15, which is uh, my standard open. It's like anywhere from 15 to 25 is a, in that game usually. So this is Encore uh, vil- Encore Vegas, right? So it's 1,500 cap. Is that right? Yep. Okay. I still want to play that game. Cap, I still yeah. want to play that game as a part of my 2-5, two, 5-5 five, five, five challenge, and I haven't had a chance to. But okay, so you open to 15 under the gun. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And the uh, villain is a older tight guy directly on my left, and he three bets to 35. It uh, folds back around to me, and I call. So V1 from plus one, three bets to 35. Yep. And this looks like an OMC type or something like that? Yeah, he's an OMC type. I had played a hand with him earlier where he uh, hit a set on the river and just check called it when I shouldn't really have anything better. So uh, that's sort of like the only hand I'd played with him. I hadn't seen him there before. By the way, Phil, this, we were going to have uh, a, actually a consistent theme of phone calls here this week, and Phil's going to sort of start it off with some actually very interesting sort of spots with very strong hands. So, okay, 15, he makes it 35. Obviously, it's kind of a small three bet, but there's nothing really more for you to do here but call, right? Right. Yep. Um, and the flop comes down, ace of spades, nine of clubs, four of clubs. Okay, so you flop... Middle set. Yep. And by the way here, Um, too, just to, I mean, you're playing 1,200 effective, so you're not super deep. You're 200 big blinds effective. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm never, I mean, people will three bet off ace king here, right? So I don't know what happens yet, or I sort of do from your email, but just sort of thinking ahead, I would, if, if this guy bet, if you checked and this guy bet, I would raise with a super high frequency. Super high, and some people right. would be like, "Well, in theory, like you shouldn't, you shouldn't be raising like with many, you know." And and I'm just like, you just you're just getting money in because if he either has kings or queens, you're not getting any more money in now. And uh, he does have, you know, these guys will three bet ace king, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, I didn't go that route. My my plan was to check raise the turn. Um, oh, okay. Sort of blank cards. Interesting. So I just I just flatted. Um, so and, what happened? You know, my read on him, he's he was a tech, he, so. He, uh, the turn was the eight of clubs. No, what happened on the flop? Check. What happened on the flop? Uh, I checked, sorry, he bet, uh, 45 and I called. So again, I don't, I mean, I, I don't remember that you check called here, but what was your line of thinking here? I mean, I just gave you my line about why I would check raise. Why did, right. why did you decide to call? I definitely check raise, you know, sets here most of the time. Um, my thought process was like, if I had like a lower club draw, I don't think I'm getting him off of ace king. So it wasn't like a huge bet. So I, I think I would tend to call with a lot of my draws there anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my first thought definitely was to check raise. Um, but then, you know, I don't, I don't do it a hundred percent there, probably like 90%, like very often, but this time I decided not to. Well, I mean, I would say that I understand what you're saying, in the sense that, first of all, you don't have that many suited hands from up. Well, I mean, he, I, you know, I, I guess because of his small three bet sizing, maybe you just, you know, I mean, I guess you're probably forced to call with everything you open because he makes it 35, but you're going to be a lot more ace yeah. X heavy and just other hands too. Right. But I just look at it a couple of ways. Number one, the most obvious thing is you could get an action card killer that comes on the turn, right? Like, even if a guy's a nit and he has ace-king and the turn's a queen or a jack, he might check back the turn. Of course, you got front door clubs, too. But number two, mm-hmm. where do you think you're going to get the most action? On what street? Like, where do you think that an ace is never going to fold if he has ace-king? Right. And I would say the flop. Yeah, the flop for sure. Like, if the turn comes like a, a seven and you check and he puts in a bet and you check-raise him... How many people check raise semi bluff turn in a three bet pot at the five dollar blind level? That is so value heavy at the five dollar blind level, specifically because it's in a three bet pot. Now I'm not saying the guy's necessarily going right. to fold ace king, but he's way more likely to fold some hand if you go for a check raise on turn 
than on flop, and then you have the betting lead from out of position. This is why you're incentivized to fast play from out of position. That's, I mean, that's sort of what my take is. But he bets 45, right. and you call. So the pot's like 160-ish, something like that. Yep, about 160. Okay. Uh, so the turn's uh, action killer eight of clubs. Uh, that's check, check. Yeah, there you go. So it goes check, check. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and I kind of capped his range at this point. Um, I thought he would keep betting, you know, like the flushes, the stronger stands. Um, that was sort of my thought process behind well, this check. I understand what you're saying, and, and I'll, I'll bring it back to how I think that by the definition of cap – you know, I, I give uh, this term a lot of shit, whoever made this up. Like, yes, by the definition of cap, <laughs> he probably doesn't have a flush because he checked back turn, right? When you think even OMC, what are the hands that he's going to three bet UTG from plus one, right? It's going to be big pocket right. pairs, and it's going to be some high, you know, some ace king off, ace king suited, maybe even ace queen suited. Obviously, he can have ace king of clubs here, but. Mm-hmm capped at pocket aces do you see what i'm saying like it's just like yeah he doesn't have many flushes here but that doesn't mean that he's going to fold and he could still have a very strong hand too i mean we can look at all kinds of different poker hands and depending on configuration where somebody opened from and what happened in the hand yes you can cap the person at the non nuts. That's why that's the issue that I have with the term capping because you have the nuts and then you have everything else. Well, if the nuts are deuce three offsuit and the board comes out ace, five, six, nine, 10, right? Ace, five, six, nine, 10. Um, well, the under the gun guys capped at pocket aces, right? He doesn't have the or excuse me, ace four, five, nine, ten. The end of the gun guy's capped at pocket aces. He doesn't have deuce three. So is he cap? He's capped at right. the non nuts. Do you see what, do you see where I'm going with that? Like it's just Yeah. It can get pretty it can get pretty extreme. But anyways, okay, so turn goes check check. Yep. And the river is a four of diamonds. Um Okay. So I've I've been working some over bets into my game and I thought this was a good spot for it. So I bet three hundred. Wow, okay. Yep. Um, and he jams on me for 1100 total. Wow, so you bet 300 into 160, so the pot's 460, and then he jams for 1100, so it's 1560, uh-huh. 800 to call, right? Um, what's or that? actually, it's a little bit... Uh, yeah, 1260. So... 1260, 800 to call. Four twelve sixty eight. Oh, uh, you said he jammed for twelve hundred, right? Okay, so yeah, twelve sixty ish for eleven hundred total. Yeah, two. Yeah, okay, eight hundred on top. Right, so, yeah, so twelve hundred, eight hundred to call, right? So yeah, four yep. four sixty and then uh, four six right four sixty, three hundred no one sixty is four sixty, and then he jams for. 1100 total, right? 1560, 800 a call, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, it's, it, yeah, 1560, okay. a call, yeah. Yeah, so you're getting almost two to one. I mean, listen, obviously from a theoretical perspective, like you have the second best hand, right? You possibly can have here, right? Um, I guess you right. could somehow, somehow have pocket fours, right? But whatever, throw out pocket fours. That's, yeah. Yeah, so you have the second best hand here. And uh, from a minimum defense sort of frequency perspective right like an mdf like in theory you have to call with some hands because he would just basically have a profitable bluff like all the time right so that's true right have i made exploitable folds like this absolutely i did it in the main event at the world series this year when i did my vlog about it it wasn't quite to this extent where i had second full house but i had ace queen on an ace high board and i fold the turn Mm -hmm. but you're over betting the pot here which really, really, like, makes me want to fold. Like, it would be one thing if you bet, like, 150 and he made it, like, 500, and you're like, well, getting a price. Did he ever, like, slow play, like, the nut flush? I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to think of a hand. Like, this guy, like, if he slow played the nut flush, is he really jamming at the... I'm just trying to think if he's possibly overvaluing any hand here. 
the other hands that right. he, he, he may, possibly would be like, but I don't even know if, the, if these hands are in his three bet range. Pocket eights, right? And uh, ace four suited. But does this guy doesn't right. seem like the guy that's got ace four suited here, right? Three betting from plus one. No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, it, it's no. just like, I mean, you beat <laughs> ace four suited, which there are two combos of, and you beat pocket eights. But that's a pretty big stretch, man. I mean, listen, like I said, I, from a right. theoretical perspective, yes, you have to call in situations like this. From what you're telling me, I feel like I want to fold. Yeah. Um, I, I think I just had a bit of tunnel vision to the fact that I slow played it on the flop. Yeah. Um, and then I thought this was like the best hand I ever have here. You know, unless I have the pocket fours. Well, that's true. Um, All what you're saying is true, and right. some people are saying in the chat that he's egregiously overvaluing Ace King. There's no way. Ace King of clubs, I guess, is maybe what people are no, thinking. No, a bluff. Yeah. You know? Oh, with I a mean, bluff. If you have oh. Ace King, like the Ace of clubs. No, this and, guy's like, not he, doing I, that. Maybe he turns that into you yeah. know, but he's not he's never doing that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some other people um, are saying also that shown it's that I can make some big laydowns. You know, so I thought maybe he's taking advantage of me. I had folded some big hands to single raises earlier. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, just another but, little, f yeah. another thing that that's interesting is the small sizing pre, um, that some people are bringing right. up in the chat too. Like, does the does the OMC make it thirty five? You know, it, it, I've seen a lot of different things with these small three bet sizes. Sometimes people do make it small. Sometimes sometimes it will be like nines ten. Sometimes it will be ace king. But I've also seen people do it small with like, uh, premiums too. If they're not getting a lot of, um, if they're not getting a lot of. Uh, you know, calls because they're not getting the getting value. I mean, it, it, like I said, here's the thing from a theoretical perspective. Yes. You have to call. Have I made folds like this in the past? Absolutely. It sounds to me like if I knew the guy really well, I might fold this hand, but you know, you're also giving reasons where you think that you can't fold because there are some other things going on as well. But it seems to me like this is a lot of pocket aces. What did end up? Well, what did you end up doing? Yeah, I ended up calling yeah. uh, much too quickly, and he flipped over the aces. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was a lesson learned, and uh, and definitely, you know, thinking back on it, like pocket aces just makes the most sense. You know, it's either pocket aces or like ace king with an ace of clubs, or pocket kings with the king of clubs that he's turning into a bluff, and like that's just not in his wheelhouse, you know. Dude, there's that's not in anybody's wheel. But I mean, here's the thing: where you got to pull that back. I mean, again, I understand what you're saying, but. I, I think one of the key inflection points here is is that you're you're basically two x over bending the river, right? In a three bet pot, that's so non-standard in itself. You might see that at two five once every couple months. I'm, I'm talking literally, you know, I've I've commentated thousands of hours of hands. So when you make a non-standard play by two x two x in the pot from out of position in a three bet pot, you have to then overlay non-standard and non-standard. Like it would be like. One out of 50 times, somebody overbets 3x the pot from out of position in a three-bet pot, which it's actually less than that. But And then how often is kings with the king of clubs going to then bluff to that non-standard? Do you see what I'm saying? One out of 50 times right. one out of 50 is one out of 2,500, by the way. That's how probability works. I'm just throwing numbers out at you, but it, it's just <laughs> such a small – it's just I, – the, I think the most important thing is, is that when you – First of all, rivers in live poker are under bluffed, right? And when you overbet a river, it is unbelievably mm -hmm. under bluffed. Even though, yes, he has aces, you probably don't because you don't put in the four bet. People just aren't necessarily on that level. Like I said, from a theoretical perspective, yeah, obviously from an MDF perspective, it's a call. I don't think that anyone's going to fault you from calling, but I do think you can make this fold against the right against the right player. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200, click on the link right there.